Good morning. I want to thank you for being here with us today at the Department of Justice. Uh, we have just finished celebrating Labor Day, and so to all of you who are here working, to the men and women of the Department of Justice, uh, we want to say thank you for the work you do, the honorable way in which you do it, uh, for making us proud, for building our country, and certainly in California for making us the economic engine for America and move over Great Britain. You've helped make us, the men and women of California have helped make us the fifth largest economy in the world. And that is no easy task. You have to work hard. And sometimes some people work harder than you think. And in fact, they work so hard that right in front of us, they're working beyond what they should in ways that are violating their rights as workers. And sometimes it happens in our neighborhoods. It's right beneath us, it's not far away, and we miss it. And so today we're here to talk about what happens when people work very hard in this country, but are abused and have their rights violated. And I'm gonna tell you a story because it is a story that happens in your neighborhood, in my neighborhood, and we could stop this from occurring. Uh, so let me introduce to you the people that are with me today. I want to start with Aman Amanda Plisner. Amanda is one of the Deputy Attorney Generals in our office. She's also the coordinator on our human trafficking operations. Along with Amanda, uh, uh, Chris Caligiri, who is, who is the Acting Director of the Bureau of Investigations. And so the work that you see done here was done by Chris and his team. Uh, Special Agent Supervisor Susan Gorsuch, who is here with me. And of course, Peter Wold, Special Agent uh, Supervisor, who is the case agent in this particular matter as well. Each one of them, uh, I might ask them to answer questions if you have some specifics about the case I'm going to tell you about today. Rainbow Bright is a company based in the San Francisco Bay Area. Most of their operations, and they operate four adult residential care facilities and two child care centers, are based in South San Francisco, Daly City, and Pacifica. <clears throat> the weapons you see before us here come from the owners and operators of Rainbow Bright. These weapons come from the operators of adult daycare facilities and child care facilities. These weapons were found in some cases in those facilities or in the residence of the owners of these facilities. What we want to talk about today is the workers in these facilities, because it was the workers who helped bring this case to light, and it, the, it is the workers who are the greatest victims of Rainbow Bright and its operations. Most of the workers I'm going to tell you about are Filipino immigrants. The number of uh, workers who were exploited could be in the hundreds. Over a, about a 10-year period, I believe, Rainbow Bright essentially employed mostly immigrants to care for adults in these daycare facilities or children in their daycare facilities. Rainbow Bright was cheating not just their workers of their pay, not just the workers of their dignity, but was cheating you and me as taxpayers. They were cheating you and me as consumers. They were cheating you and me, and in some cases, some people who actually were using these facilities to have their adult, uh, disabled loved one or senior or their child care for facilities while the employees were providing, by all accounts, loving care, they were doing so under egregious circumstances. Rainbow Bright was cheating you and me out of paying its fair share of state income taxes, out of paying for workers' compensation, unemployment insurance. It, I suspect the federal government will find that uh, Rainbow Bright's Owners were cheating the federal government out of uh, 
tax dollars and also services that were rendered under whether it was a Social Security Disability Insurance Program or other programs where Rainbow Bright was collecting money from the federal government through these programs, which is money out of your pocket because those are all taxpayer-funded programs. Over the course of a year-long investigation, we discovered more and more violations, not just, as I said, of worker rights, but of human rights. We are today here to announce that my office will file 59 charges against four members of the Gamos family who are operating Rainbow Bright. These charges include 26 counts of grand theft, of employees' labor, essentially wage theft. We estimate that unpaid wages and overtime total somewhere around eight and a half million dollars. We're also charging four of the defendants, the four defendants with hum human trafficking for using physical force, sexual violence, fraud, and psychological coercion uh, with their victims. Of the 59 charges, eight are for human trafficking. There's one count of conspiracy to commit human trafficking, 26 counts of grand theft of labor, one count of con conspiracy to commit grand theft of labor, nine counts of unemployment and insurance code section 2117.5 false fraudulent tax filing, nine, nine counts of unemployment and insurance code section 2118.5 failure to pay unemployment insurance taxes, one count of work compensations fraud, one count of failure to secure payment of workers' compensation insurance, and three counts of rape. According to the complaint that we have filed, Rainbow Bright employees were forced to work nearly 24 hours a day. They slept on floors in garages. Most of these facilities were residential homes. And whether it was adult daycare or childcare, these were homes that the owners operated in residential communities. And so the workers were forced to live on the premises. They were forced to work up to 24 hours a day. They slept on the floors and in garages. They were locked outside, sometimes in the rain, when the owners were not home. One defendant is being charged with three counts, as I said, of rape against a female employee whom he was trafficking. Rainbow Bright's executives allegedly threatened to turn them over, all of these workers, to immigration officials if they spoke up about their treatment. They even confiscated people's, the workers' passports. Our team also discovered a number of firearms in the facility, and you see them laid out before you. Uh, why you need this type of firepower to take care of people who are infirm, who are aged, or who are children, I, I, don't, I can't understand it, but these are the weapons that we found from our investigation possessed by the owners of uh, of, this of these facilities. We soon expect other charges to be filed in relation to these weapons as well. I want to make a point, as we always do, that please keep in mind that charges, criminal charges, are only allegations at this stage. A defendant is always in this country presumed innocent until and unless proven guilty. But in California, these crimes won't stand whether they are committed against people who are working very hard or whether they are committed against you as a human being who is being trafficked by others. No matter the form, in California, we intend to go after those who violate the law. We're not just pursuing criminal penalties and restitution for the victims. We're also going after the money that the businesses owe the state of California for failing to pay into workers' compensation and unemployment insurance. Our team worked with colleagues from several state agencies as part of what we call the TRACE program, the Tax Recovery and Criminal Enforcement Task Force. Our core partners are the Department of Tax and Fee Administration, the Franchise Tax Board, and the Employment Development Department. Together, the TRACE Task Force leverages our expertise and pools our investigative resources. We do this to combat egregious felony-level crimes in the underground economy throughout the state. Trace got started back in 2014, launching a pilot program in Sacramento. 
by the end of last year, in just a few years, our team had identified close to a quarter billion dollars in unreported business income and some $46 million in associated lost revenue to the taxpayers uh, and to our state. We have so far recovered millions in lost tax revenue for the state and for California's taxpayers. This spring, I sponsored legislation to expand the TRACE task force to include teams not just in two areas, two regions of the state, but all five major metropolitan areas of California. I want to acknowledge Senator Kathleen Galgiani, Senator Pro Tem, President Pro Tem Tony Atkins, Assemblymember Joaquin Arambula, and Assembly Speaker Anthony Rendon for their leadership in getting this legislation passed this year. It will go a long way in protecting California's workers and taxpayers, as well as the businesses in California that operate and play by the rules. I hope this announcement that we make today serves as a reminder to anyone who decides they want to cheat California, cheat California's workers, and cheat California taxpayers. The TRACE program and our task force is ready to hold you accountable to the fullest extent of the law. I want to also ask those who may be watching or listening or reading about this, that if you believe you have information about these types of crimes being committed in your neighborhood, whether it's someone who is enslaving another person, whether it is someone who is cheating our government out of its taxes, I hope you will call our TRACE task force. The number for the TRACE task force is 855-234-9949. And a reminder, this could be happening in your backyard, in your neighborhood, with people that you believe are living a regular life or being cared for. I hope we will all take this seriously because just after celebrating Labor Day, we all deserve to earn a better life if we work very hard and not be cheated out of those opportunities. I want to thank you all for coming. Again, appreciate your being here. Thank you.